Swimsuit for Jatai Academy here on the web with another video in our ongoing series of educational support and information for beauty and barber professionals. Today we're going to reach into the mailbag, so to speak, and we're going to pull out a viewer letter, a post-it note, to talk about a question we recently received from someone about the business of haircutting. And the question was, can you offer some tips or suggestions for how you would monitor your haircut performance? Now I thought that was an interesting question because I thought it was an incomplete question. They weren't specific in their asking about are we monitoring our haircut performance technically, the quality of our actual physical haircutting, or are we monitoring our haircut performance financially as in the numbers of the business that we're doing? So it makes for an interesting question either way, and what I thought I would do, consistent with the way I love to provide my top five tips format, I would offer my top five tips for monitoring haircut performance, and I'm going to split it between technical monitoring and financial monitoring. Sounds good? Makes sense? Let's go. Tip number one, take pictures. I think a great way to assess your technical performance in your haircutting is to photograph your haircuts and then look at them with your own very critical eye. Now of course generally we are our own worst critics, so you're going to be rough on yourself, but I think it's a great way to look at our work, assess our work, and see things we may not see live on the head or that we may not see if we don't have the opportunity for some closer inspection and even close inspection put off a bit from when we actually did the haircut. In the moment, we may be very proud of our work, and it may prevent us from seeing some elements of our work and allowing us to truly be honest in the assessment of the quality of what we're doing. Number two on the list is post the pictures. While your assessment of your work can be very valuable, our assessment of your work can be very, very honest. Put them up on your Instagram. Ask for and solicit feedback from your community and listen to the answers. Now, sometimes you gotta have a thick skin and you gotta be tough when it comes to other people critiquing your work. Some people are not politically correct and some people aren't gonna be particularly nice to you. And that's okay. Not everybody is a critic and not everybody is a good critic and not everybody's even right. What you wanna do when you look at and read and listen to reviews of any type is look for the highs and look for the lows and look for the common themes and try to eliminate the extremes and the white noise. Some things that are just somebody griping, maybe it's a hater, maybe it's somebody who's not really trying to honestly be helpful to you. So ask other people by way of posting pics. Number three on the list is consult with and develop a relationship with some type of mentor in the business. I always say a powerful relationship with a mentor, someone who knows what you want to know, who has what you want to have, who is where you want to be, and who is doing the things you want to be doing. And it's also important to acknowledge when we talk about a relationship with a mentor that a good relationship with a mentor is a two-way street. It's not just one wise old guy telling a young whippersnapper what to do and how to do it. It should really be a two-way street. The mentor should be receiving at least as much inspiration, motivation, and contribution from their protege as they receive move in the other direction. So a true mentor relationship, and I've been lucky in my career to have several very, very good mentors, and I'm going to say honestly, I think there are several people in the industry who would claim that I have served as a very valuable mentor to them, and I enjoy those relationships from both perspectives. So finding a mentor, somebody that you can confide in, somebody that you can rely on, and somebody that will be honest in their helping you to grow professionally can be a valuable way of monitoring your progress. The last two, four and five on the list, are really about the financial end of your business. And number four, anyone who knows me knows I say this all the time, you gotta know your numbers. To know your numbers is to grow your numbers. And that which gets measured gets improved. Those are two of my favorite number statements. To know your numbers is to grow your numbers. And that which gets measured gets improved. So on my list for monitoring your performance, every night at the end of the night, crunch your numbers. Every week at the end of the week, calculate your weekly numbers. Every month at the end of the month, analyze, break down, aggregate, collate, and assemble all of your numbers. But what numbers should that be? 
to truly monitor your business, and I've talked about this in other videos, and we can go into this in depth in individual videos, your rate of occupancy. If I see you at a hair show or run into you at the mall, hey hair cutter, how you doing today? You're good, nice to see you. What's your rate of occupancy? I ask all the time. And if you look at me and you go, uh, um, my rate of what? You don't know your numbers. You don't know your business. You're probably not growing your business. But if I say to you, what's your rate of occupancy? And this happened to me on the trade show floor not long ago. I was starting a conversation with a barber and I said to him, what's your rate of occupancy? And he said, 87.3. Last week, I said, how do you know that? He said, I know that because I calculate my numbers every single week. That's a barber who's thriving and growing and monitoring their performance and truly growing because they're on top of their numbers. Rate of occupancy, repeat request rate, average ticket, and referral rate. Re rate of occupancy, repeat request rate, average ticket, and referral rate. Those are the four basic key metrics of the business. And you know, I offer phone coaching, to beauty and barber professionals, if you don't know those numbers, if you don't know how to get those numbers, if you don't know how to interpret those numbers and understand those numbers, reach out to me through any social media spot. Go to clipperguy.com on the web, ivanzoot.com, click talk to me and talk to me. Through my phone coaching program, I will help you learn how to calculate your numbers, learn how to interpret your numbers, and learn how to grow your numbers. So that's number four on the list. I dropped the post-it, but here it is. Number five on the list is talk to your clients. One of your greatest sources of feedback about how you're doing as a business is gonna come from the people who truly own the business, who run the business, who have a hand in the business and a vested interest in the business. Do customer surveys. Use an online source like SurveyMonkey. Use a clipboard and a pen in your waiting room. Ask your customers, how am I doing? What do you like? What should I do different? What should our business be doing? What services are we delivering that you're really enjoying? What services do we not deliver that you might like to have? I think you'll be very surprised if you ask these questions of your customer, and I think you may find amazing things happen to your business when you start listening to your customers and asking them to monitor your performance. Because at the end of the day, our customers, they fill out our report card, they fill it out at the cash register by signing a credit card slip or writing a check or handing us our fees and our gratuities. I'm Ivan Zoot for Jatai Academy, J-A-T-A-I dot net on the web. Please go there, please like this video, please share this video, please comment on this video, and please subscribe to the Academy for great information like this on an ongoing basis. Thanks for watching and have a great day.